Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, advanced jungle query optimization. Uh, I'm coming from this small country so far away from here called Bulgaria. Uh, if you hear about this for the first time, <laughs> no worries. It's that <laughs> matter. Uh, so who am I? I'm 23 years old. I'm a student in Sofia, which is the capital city of Bulgaria. Um, I'm last year a student. I'm also a Django and uh, React web developer. <coughs> um, I was very lucky to find great, great people and friends who really loved their job to build software that solves a real life problem. And I'm still working with them. Uh, so we are Hacksoft. We are outsourcing company who bu which built uh, software for business. And uh, we make programming courses in Bulgaria for uh, in Python and Ruby. Uh, we organize a big programming conference in Sofia of uh, 15 and 16 of September, so we'll be very happy to see you there. But that's about us. Let's talk about Django. Uh, my aim during this talk is to tell you about three types of problems that we've hit while developing Django applications and uh, we've uh, faced while well, using the, the ORM to interact in the database. But first, let's make two assumptions. The ORM's main idea is to make the database interaction easier. We want to avoid writing raw SQL, and we, we just can write a single <coughs> Python class which represents the database table. And we can call a method like dot all that will fetch all the, the rows from the database. And my second assumption is that Python is not the new SQL. What I mean is that SQL is great when you want to make database operations. But using ORM makes you uh, makes you think that you can uh, do the where clause, for example, with simple Python filter, which is not a good idea. So, the first problem, too much SQL queries. Uh, on the project I, I work at the moment, we had a, an API, which uh, had like five or 6,000 SQL queries per request which was the real performance issue. <laughs> so, uh, how we solve that? We know these two methods, select related and prefetch related. They came natively from Django ORM, so how they works? Let's say we have two models, user and shared account. So every user is related to a shared account, and every shared account ha can have multiple users. So let's say we, we need to have all the users. We make user.objects.o, which under, under the hood, every query set is just a SQL query. So the, the query for this expression is select everything from user. <coughs> so the problem with this query is that if we want to get the account for every user, we need to make an extra query for each object. So we can solve this with select related. You, you just tell the ORM that you need, you, it needs to uh, join the table with the share account, so you get it with the same query. Uh, but if you want to get the shared account object, with, with their users, you cannot join. You need to use, 
you need to get uh, more than one user for every account. So the way we do that is using Perfect Related. We need to, to select all the accounts, get their IDs, then select the, the users which have these IDs in the in class. And uh, the, the one thing that we don't, do not see here when we use that is uh, you need to fire the first query, then you force making a second query. It actually perfect related doesn't optimize your API. So you make the second query anyway. So if you don't need the users, it will be, mm, you don't need to use the perfect related. So tip one, you can, you can uh, make a simple SQL joins with select related and perfect related. It's easier. The second problem, too much data. We had an API which made uh, 100 queries, which is not a very big count, but we had too many objects. Let's say we, let's see it in, in the example. We, ha we have a music service web application with three models. We have a uh, user, every user has a related playlist and every, every playlist has uh, related songs. So let's say we need to get the total length of every playlist. We cannot store it in the playlist because as soon as we add a single song, it will change. So we implement a property in the playlist model which will calculate the sum of all songs length. Uh, but this is Python, so we, we can write just like sum from list comprehension to save some lines of code. Uh, let's make the same thing for the user model. We need to get all the playlists and sum their length. But the problem with this code is uh, if you want to get all users with their length of all the playlists, nothing else, just that. And we have 10 users, every, every user has 10 playlists, every playlist has, has 10 songs, then in order to calculate the length for 10 users, we need to make, we need to fetch 1,110 1, database rows which will not be very slow, but if you had 10,000 10, database rows, it will be a problem, since there is still uh, physical limitations between the, the software architecture. So, here's the second assumption. Python, Python is not the new SQL. Uh, SQL is made to to make this thing easier. And what we do here is just a sum over a group. It's a sum aggregation over a group of songs grouped by playlist. And this aggregation looks like this. It's a select clause from the playlist and uh, the song's total length Field is calculated as uh, aggregation over this. <coughs> and here's our model at the moment. So how can we do that with an ORM expression? How can we generate this query with the plain Python? We can define a query set. The query set is the Django way for generating SQL query. You can, you can write custom method which will select or prefetch something or annotate, which is the ORM syntax for as clause, select subquery as something. So let's define a query set. Uh, in our query set, we need to group all the songs, then, make a, then we have to make a sum aggregation. So we define a method called collect, which annotates the song total length. And we modify our property in the model 
so it can use the the annotated, pro the annotated field. Now, the reason we do that is if we get the playlist from the song with the song dot playlist, it uh, we we don't get it from the query set, so it doesn't know about this collection. We don't go collect there, so we we need the Python code anyway. But if we just need the playlist with their songs land, we can define the collect. We can annotate the songs total land, and we should put something there which is equal the to the group the group by class. So the ORM has two functions that will do the job. The first is subquery. A subquery will accept two arguments, query, which is the expression for the group by class, and output field, since the database will know what to return as a result of this query, but the ORM does not know what type of value should expect. So the output field should be integer field, since we sum integers. And the query set will be song objects uh, with values just the playlist ID. This is the, the field to group by. The next thing is we need, from the group by, we need just the group for this playlist, not all the groups. So we filter the playlist ID with the uh, outer ref, which is the, the ORM expression of get me get me field from the outer query. And the last thing we should do is to make the aggregation itself. In our case, it's just sum. Sum of fields of the song. And uh, when it, once we call playlist.objects.collect, it will produce the same query that we would do if we didn't use DRM. We just generated it. Okay. Uh, okay, we we want to do the same thing for the user model. We need to group all the, all the playlists, get their length that we calculated, and return the sum aggregation over them. So we we do exactly the same thing. The only difference is that uh, we group the playlists by the user ID filter them with the user ID, and then we should sum over the aggregation that we implemented in the playlist query set. And we can get it in the first line of the property. So the end query will look like this. Uh, OK, tip two. If you have an API which calculates something over a group of objects, but you don't need the objects, you can use subquery and outer ref. And use the database function to calculate since they're really fast. And uh, you will avoid fetching the objects in the application. And the third problem, we have too much queries, but we have too much data. And the problem, the difference from the previous two is that you cannot use select related, you cannot use profess related, but uh, let's see it in, in the example. We have three, these three models, the same at the beginning. Uh, but the only difference is that the length of the song, the real length of the song, it calculates as, as the, the length multiplied by 0 0.8. So if we do the, the prefetch related, if we, do, if we do the same thing at the beginning, uh, it will select everything, but you need to calculate the song's real length anyway. So you need all the objects anyway. Uh, 
Okay. So how can we do that with Django ORM? Django ORM provides an expression wrapper, which is the way uh, Django says you can use, you can implement this expression when passing it to this this wrapper and uh, define the output field. So what should be the expression? Uh, we have just the length multiplied by, by 0 0.8. You can get the field, the the object field with the F expression, which will be evaluated in the database while fetching the object, not in the Python code. And you can pass Python value to the database and say, do these things with these values from the database rows and from the query. So we can just get the length and multiply it by 0 0.8 and define the output field, which is integer field. But once we do that, the previous group by class that we, we've written will not be correct since they should depend on the real land, not, not the land. And we should go to, we should go to this query set, this query set, and say values list from some aggregation of not the land, but the expression equal to the real land. So, you should get it from the, the song, song query set. Mm. And the problem here is how, we, how should we test that? We write an ORM expression and we, we think it's correct, but we don't have the test for it. So if, if it's a Python code, you can make a unit test for it and uh, you can you can test every case you have. But we said that we need to have the Python code anyway because you, you can uh, get the object as a relation of the other object. You can get the playlist as a song.playlist, not the playlist.object.collect. And if we had these properties, we can write proper tests for them. Proper tests like this. We have a song object. We have uh, the real length expected, in with, and we just assert this. So the only thing we can we need to do is just to get the object again with the collect, with song object collect, we get with the same ID, and assert the same thing. It's, this is the only change in the in our test. Mm. So the good thing here is if you have the proper test for every model's property, you with a minimal change you can see if if it works. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are fast, so we have plenty of time for questions. So maybe you would like to ask some questions how to do it. So I come and give you the microphone. Good talk. Uh, one question. You, you solved one of the problems there basically through code duplication yeah. in the example of multiplying the length of the song. Do you have any tips on reducing code duplication while maintaining efficiency? Reducing what? Sorry? Reducing code duplication. In in your example, you uh, you multiplied the uh, the original database length of the song by oh, yeah. 0 0.18. Let me turn it twice. Uh, of course, that's a contrived example, but the, the uh, you mean uh, the song total length with yeah the new property? No, by 0 0.8 to get real length in one of your later examples. In the query set? Uh, not or in the query set. You, had, you have one uh, method on the song model. 
Yeah. Where you multiply the uh, the stored length of the song by 0 0.8 to get the real length. And in your um, higher level method on the user, you do the same multiplication operation. Okay. And that is code duplication. You're you're doing basically the same operation in two different places. Yeah, it's the same aggregation. Yeah, but that is considered a, an anti-pattern, something generally to be avoided. In well, this case, you're doing it for efficiency, but it still carries some risk. Well, you need to you need to group the objects anyway because because of the relation. Yeah, but is there a way to do it with less duplication? Is what I'm asking. Uh, which code? I, I'm not sure you understand you. That's okay. Thank you. Well, Maybe you can clear this up and then you look at the code together, but we haven't found the yeah. code place yet. Any other questions about queries, making them fast? Oh, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. I have one rather qu trivial question. Uh, you use uh, the decorator, decorator property. Yeah. Uh, would it be advisable to use the uh, Django own decorator cached property? Would it uh, bring yeah. some uh, benefit here? Yeah, it will, it will be really shorter and easier. Uh, the only problem that you can face if you use cache property is, uh, let's say you return um, money money field instance in the property but the database doesn't support this type of uh, this type of value so you need to get the the field collected by the query set and then pass it to the python class money field and this is i think this is the only case that you can have problems with cache property thank you it will be there anyway Thank you. Uh, sometimes you have uh, like the idea of the, the query you want to write, uh -huh. but then the things you end up writing with uh, the Django REM don't look at all like the query you had in mind. Uh -huh. So is there, are there first like good resource to understand uh, what you should be using uh, in the ORM in order to get what you need as SQL? And is there a way to verify that the SQL actually is uh, what you want it to be? Well, I think uh, it's easier to check your um, ORM expression while you develop when you see the real SQL query. But uh, you better write the ORM expression since it's easier to, to maintain in long term. And you you can use the, use the query just to check the, the, the like a science check. You want what you want to you need to achieve, and you just need to see the real query. And you can easily print the the query itself in the Python shell. Yeah, but the ORM expression is definitely um, easier to maintain long term. And then, is there any good uh, resource, and, uh, like uh, a simple place where we can get mapping on uh, this query uh, exp uh, ORM expressions give this SQL uh, mm -hmm. like a building block, something like we have for the mm -hmm. the class based views. There's the classic class based views site that uh, many people use. Is there the same kind of resource for the ORM? Well, I don't think so. Okay. Thank so. you. Yep. And with this, you can get the actual SQL query, which you which you will generate. So. Yeah, but how do you find out the name of the the, the early run cases you need when you like the blah uh, them and like they usually relate to the name of the SQL index? Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You mean the name of the expression, the annotation? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. Let me check the query. Where is it? 
The query here, uh, the subquery here, had an S clause, the songs total length. It's the same name as the, let me check the annotation. The same as you've, uh, you've written in the annotate method as a keyword argument on the Python function. You can extract it from there. What were your experiences writing raw SQL from uh, Django? You mean in Django application? Yeah, like using the dot raw query set. Well, uh, in our project, we don't have the plain SQL run by DRM. Plain SQL while interacting with the database. But uh, this is very useful when you have, for example, service uh, which integrates with, with your application and uh, with your e application database and calculate some statistics. You need to put the, the plain SQL queries there. And you can get it from the query set. You can make an ORM expression, get the, the uh, SQL query, and put it there. It's, uh, and you have tests for it. This is the good part. Thank you. So uh, I think the general question was how to find out about the existence of outer ref subquery and so on in Django because when you show this, uh, I think people are seeing it for the first time. So maybe to help, this, this was general. How did you find out about the existence of outer ref and how to use it? Well, we actually have a uh, really heavy API that we need needed to optimize. It was extremely important to optimize it since it was uh, uh, very used. So uh, in junk documentations, there is uh, two short explanation how exactly subquery and outer F actually works. Uh, actually, the, there were a blog post that explains the the behavior of these two properties, but uh, we found it while while using it. We just uh, make uh, attempts, then print the SQL query and see what happens. And that, for example, what, how we found how. Let me check the query set. Oop. Uh, you need to to make group by in the to group by over the songs for a playlist, but you need to tell the field that you want the group to be grouped by. You need to group the songs by playlist ID. So how should you say that? The only idea of subquery and uh, uh, outer f with aggregation like sum is to make a group by, but you don't have an interface for it. It's, it's not uh, explained very well. So the way you do this is to call values or values list before making an aggregation. So when you, hit, when you say song.objects.values from playlist ID, the select class will look like select playlist ID from song, nothing else, just that. So once you, you made values list with the aggregation, it will return group, grouped by this field. So this is the way you can actually do it. Hello, uh, thanks for the great talk. So you basically found out how to make uh, uh, such queries by trial and error. That's what you're saying? I mean, there were, well, uh, as I understood, there's no documentation in the in Django about the... Yeah, that, that was the main thing. The other thing was uh, Django documentation, of course. For, that's a basic and uh, multiple blog posts for, uh, with examples. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so do you use uh, MySQL or Postgres for this and 
do you know if this works the same on both databases because Django RM has some issues with my SQL that are not supported in some parts of it. You mean if you want to generate a query which is not supported by the ORM? Or yes, this subquery and outer ref part, does it work on MySQL databases or only on Postgres? Do you know what? Mm -hmm. Actually, Maybe. what database do you use on this project? Uh, sorry. Hmm. Hmm. I think I think yes. It will work. If it's SQL, it would work. Okay, any more questions about queries? If there are no queries anymore, then we. Stop. Thank you very much. Give a big hand to the speaker.